Welcome to the Pitchworks Podcast. I'm Scott McTaggart. Over the last 20 years, I've been a sales rep, a marketer, a manager, an executive, a consultant, and an advisor. This show is designed to give you access to my list of contacts so that you can learn more about how to present your ideas at work and succeed in your career. Startups and salespeople, marketers and managers, from the Epicast Network in Pittsburgh, it's the Pitchworks Podcast. Uncomfortable honesty is the key to that. You have to be just openly communicating all the time. I I feel like among any industry threat, among any market threat, miscommunication is the silent killer that you may never realize. Hey everybody, it's Scott. It's Wednesday and it's a Pitchworks podcast. I got a cool show for you this week. It's a little bit of a change of pace. So Wendy and Patrick are here from the American Gas Lamp Works. This is a cool company. It dates all the way back to 1963. And as you are no doubt already aware, they've had to change a few times along the way. And right now they're in the middle of a big change to like their website and how they present the options. And and we're going to talk to them. We're going to talk to them about how those changes have taken place, and frankly, what it's like on the inside of the building for them. Um, a very hands-on, very useful, practical show. Uh, before we jump in, though, I'm going to ask you to find this fine program in Facebook and click the like button, just because my ego took a hit the last time I looked at our numbers. Uh, we are Pitchworks, P-I-T-C-H-W-E-R-K-S. Click the like button and then uh, shoot me a note. Let me know you did it just so I can, I don't know, high five you or something when I see you, you know how these numbers and whatnot, you know, affect us marketing people. Uh, before, uh, we jump in, I just also want to remind you, uh, you know, holidays are coming up. Uh, we've got, you know, some different things, different scheduling going on for that. Uh, if there's anything that you want to see coming up on the show for the end of the year, make sure you give us a holler on all the various social media channels and we will try to accommodate. Uh, let's jump in. Let's have the conversation with Wendy and Patrick. All right. So we got three mics in the studio and that is welcome, but a little weird sitting to my left. I've got Wendy Stover and, uh, Wendy, your plant management operations. That's your, that's your bailiwick. That's me. All right. Patrick Giardini sitting across from me, business development, marketing extraordinaire. Absolutely. A little bit of sales, a little bit of revenue gen, right? Yeah. And we've got the American Gas Lamp Works in the house today to talk about basically how companies that have a long history start adapting to to new ideas. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. Good. Thank you for having us. So you guys have a very interesting story in the fact that American Gas Lamp Works has actually been around for how long now? For quite a while. Um, the, the original company was started in 1963. That, yeah, that's a, that's a history. Yeah. yeah. And it was started under uh, Gaslight Manufacturing uh, by a man named Charlie Brown. Uh, who? That's a good name. Yeah. That's uh, his actual name. <laughs> yeah. And his house actually still exists under a self-playing uh, instrument museum in Etna. So of course his it does. legend lives on. Say that again. Uh, the Bernhoff Self-Playing Instrument Museum. It's in Etna, PA. It's the Hearst Castle of Pittsburgh, and almost nobody knows about it. So um, when he passed away in the late 90s, and the business had done well for quite some time, um, he left the the house uh, to become a museum under a trust. The trust owned the company, yeah, and uh, it was a nonprofit running a for profit. And after a certain amount of time, the government says uh, no, no more. You cannot do that. Wendy, I need to check with you. Am I having a stroke? Did he say the self playing instrument museum for profit nonprofit Charlie Brown? Exactly. Okay, <laughs> it's a wacky, you got wacky it right. story, man. Uh, 1963. Now, how long have you each been working for the company? I started in 1990. Okay. And Patrick? Since December, full-time. Uh, my family, we bought the business in 2012. I've been on the outside kind of looking in, working for our other business, uh, which was an iron foundry, um, and then just moved over full-time about 11 months ago. And quickly, it, it, just to make sure everybody's following the conversation, we should probably tell them what you actually make. <laughs> we make <laughs> exterior lighting uh, that is both gas and electric. Primarily gas, so that means an open flame or a gas mantle. And for those of you that don't know what that is, think of a Coleman lantern. Nice. Uh, it's a miniature bag that can ignite with gas and sort of concentrate the light to actually throw it outward. Where an open flame light, if you think of like a New Orleans style gas light, is really more of an ambient lighting. Okay. Uh, we also have an LED equivalent and an incandescent where we can put standard bulbs into. So who is your customer? Anybody. Honestly, I so mean, I could just walk up and buy one. Yeah, and uh, so we sell primarily to residential, 
Yeah. Um, we have a, a dealer network laced all throughout the country where they work with uh, gas specialists to get them installed in homes. Nice. Uh, we also have a number of gas utility partners that we work with to promote gas products. You know, we've uh, People's Gas uh, put our lamps on the outside of PNC Park. Uh, we've got some wonderful projects going in Tampa and uh, Galveston, Texas. This is pretty complex, though. You've mm-hmm. got multiple layers, like lots yeah. of different channels and whatnot. Yep. And then some of those are fairly new, I have to believe. Like the LED equivalent. I can't believe that's that old. How long have you been making that? Yeah, we just started that whenever the Giardini family took over the business. Yeah, I mean, LED hasn't even been you know commercially available. No. Well, how about this? Commercially viable. Yeah. I'm sure it's been around a long time. But in terms of people actually choosing it from from my seat outside of you know your industry Mm -hmm. didn't seem to be taking up shelf space didn't seem to be something that was available at home depot that sort of a thing until i'm going to say 10 years ago but maybe maybe even more recently than that i mean led has been around for quite some time but the technology has evolved significantly in the past like five six years right um the diodes have become much cooler much less expensive uh they've moved from like single source point leds to what they call chip on board which uh, kind of looks a bit like a communion wafer uh, with about 150 <laughs> LEDs laced onto it. Wow. And they're extremely bright. Um, the reason that we developed that early on was a, a couple different reasons. Um, if people have a gas line going to maybe the, a post light out in their yard, but they don't have it running to the lights on their house, uh, you can do a, a combination of electric and gas. But okay, get got the it. same look and feel. Yeah. Um, the LED is built to look like exactly like a gas mantle. So we can help them accommodate. There are some municipalities that have gas running on one side of the street, but electric on the other. So we help them sort of balance things out if they don't want to dig another trench. Some more significant uh, recent sales or conversions. So the only external sales force that the original company had was down in in central Florida. So you'll find our lamps laced throughout uh, homeowners associations and communities all over the place. How about that? And every once in a while, one of them will figure out that the cost price is, is pretty significant. And if they switch to LED, the payback is relatively quick. Interesting. So instead of allowing, giving them an opportunity to completely get rid of our product, we allow them to convert and we can still help them out with parts and labor over time. Yeah, you have to give them that. I mean, it, it beats giving up the customer. Yeah. Right? I mean, currently, we just sell lamps. So it's about keeping people in the fold for as long as possible until we get wide with some other products. Well, So Wendy, I need you to help me tell a story. And that is, I want you to take me back to like the first year, 90, you said, 1990? Okay, Mm -hmm. so it's 1990 and you just started working there. And the sales force I'm finding out is in Florida. You were here in Western Pennsylvania, which doesn't get as good of a winter, but anyway. Back when I first started, I started off, I started off by grinding Parts like I was grinding and dynafiling and cleaning up parts yeah. to be done. Then I moved into the assembly area. When I started assembling, I was the only assembler we had. Okay. And we weren't back then when I first started, we only had like two models, two lamp models. Right. And pretty much we only had one large distributor, which was Cunningham Gas from in Texas. Well, then it was it went to the gas companies. Right. Like um, the gas companies would, they would get a, a nice discount through us. They would actually offer their customers the lamps for free. No. Nah. Install them because they're getting the gas. Yeah, but of this. still. Yeah. Then that's how we did a lot of sales that way. All right. So fast forward, Patrick. You said you come on board in. December, mm-hmm. right? Which you're talking about a year now. Yeah. Um, but you were watching it from outside. Right. So I actually don't want to go to December. I want to go to when you first started watching what's happening. Okay. Tell me what your first impressions were as an outsider looking in. Your, your family's just gotten involved. You start looking into things and you think... I think it was a very unique business with a lot of character. Um, our family has been involved with a multi- couple manufacturing businesses. Uh, they all seem to touch metal, um, but we really like character in a business. And this was define so- character in this context for me. So uh, the first, my first contact with the business was going and taking a tour of Charlie Brown's house. Right. I mean, it is a self-playing instrument museum where every single room is dedicated to a different part of Germany, Bavaria, or Austria. And to me, it was just like, this guy had a very clear vision for what he was going for. Right. And he built that into the lamps. A lot of our lamps are named after European cities. They have a very European-style architecture. And everything was built the right way, 
had a small geographic uh, manufacturing footprint. It was everything that we looked for. We we try to manufacture everything as, as close to home as possible. Yeah. This gave us the opportunity to do that. And the other attractive reason was all the gas business that was going on in the area here. We didn't know how to drill for it, but we figured there, there are all these peripheral all businesses. All the land that, leases and whatnot were yeah. around. So you figure, you know, there's going to be these per, these businesses that spin out of drilling for gas yeah. that are attached to it. And there's going to be the supply. So that supply has got to go somewhere. And yeah. You know, I think it was a great company that had a great message and a great process, just didn't have brand recognition at all. Okay. Uh, and when we, you know, when I noticed that right away too. Yeah. Cause I would think that I would know this company before meeting you. Yeah. No, absolutely. I, I meet people all the time. They don't even know that we exist and we're right here doing a good job and have been for in a, a museum yeah. with like, like there's a lot of reasons to know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and so you had, you had that first impression was, Top of mind awareness just isn't there. No. And I think plugging the the problems with the business as a whole, like there was just some constraints that needed to be put on the processes, uh, converting from minimal options to a highly customized product, right? Uh, determining whether it was valuable to go with a dealer network or going direct to consumer. I which, hate that thought. Yeah. That one is always a challenge. Yeah. There's that, so much data goes into dealer network versus direct sales versus whatever. Oh, and, and all the information that we got from the consultants up front sort of played against what would be my intuition. Your gut was telling you something different. Right, exactly. So I think we've, we found a healthy balance with all of that now. We've solidified what we want the brand to be. Yeah. We've gone through a couple of website conversions, and I think we've updated it to really engage the customer on a passion level. I've been watching the website changes yeah. that you've been making. Actually, they're one of the main reasons I invited you in, because yep. I, I've seen what you've been doing, yep. incorporating video and moving images, uh, trying, to, trying to give people a sense of look at all the choices mm -hmm. without maybe asking them for a lot of time to explore all those choices. Right. Right. It very quickly shows me that there's a lot going on here instead of, you know, there's one thing and I'm just trying to make it seem bigger. Yeah. Right. Um, so how many, we 1990, there's two models. How many models ballpark do you think there are today? Well, we have what? 16. Yeah. Dep depending yeah, on. Yeah. So that, Good. that does change it. Yeah. There's about 16. Round yeah. up to 20, that's still not that many, but it's a ton when you have to individually describe each one, individually market each one, et cetera. So most of those were developed by the time we came in contact with the company. We've released a few. Uh, what we're trying to do is create a suite of products. So sometimes we take the residential size, which is you know the average size lamp you see outside a home, just blow it up by a little bit for like a peer mounted lamp. So if you want to have you know smaller ones in the front and larger ones in the rear, right. things like that. And then we've developed a couple new styles. Uh, but yeah, prim by the time we took over the company, most of the styles were solidified so they had moved from two to about 14 styles by but it is different it's a totally different when you when you only had two models costs were simpler right mm -hmm. you know like okay there's only so many parts that we need to buy right, right? the supply chain is simpler mm -hmm. like okay this is where we get fittings this is where we get finishes this is where <laughs> yeah <laughs> simple 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 well and it was much smaller like the color options you, know, yeah. you can get it was a ford model right any you can have any color you want as long as that color is black, black exactly. for real right? so just expanding that out to multiple options expanding the type of glass you can get at you know it, it it very quickly turned into you know what could be considered too big of a monster with the website development what we're trying to do is really you know it's a passion purchase it's a very intimate relationship that. that we're making with our customers right away, right? Yeah. So we want to engage them on a visceral level and get them to buy in emotionally up front the second they come onto the site. Right. And we really think that we what we achieved with that video engagement up front accomplishes that. Yeah. Uh, time will tell. But we thought that was the best way to get the point across with a nice simple message handcrafted just for you because like Wendy said, we don't we don't keep inventory. We make everything as the orders come in. Right. It takes a little longer, but it's just your lamp. And, uh, you get what you want. Yeah, it's a very small part of the house, but it's it's it gives a very nice accent. And uh, you know, our message is you know we want to help you make the neighbors jealous. Oh, that's a good one, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And that's that's what we're trying to get to with our customers. These very nice, intimate relationships where they feel comfortable letting us adjust their home. Yeah, and that's a, that's a hard argument to make because you, you got to build trust quick. You can't break it. You got to good build a good reputation. We're getting there. Well, and what you're doing is hard for people. Mm -hmm. Because 16, like I said, small number, like when it could have been hundreds or it could have been dozens or whatever. And if I'm a buyer, if I'm coming onto the website and I'm thinking about what's possible, 
I don't know. I kind of like I'm pre tired. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like oh, I don't want to do this. Like, if okay, so the lovely and talented Mrs. Mac Taggart comes to me and says, "Let's put gas lamps on the front of the house." Yep. Yeah, I'm immediately like, "Oh man, this is gonna take a." M- I was going to say a minute, but I'm not sure that the the, the sarcasm would have come through. <laughs> right. Like, okay, do I have enough energy to do this? Yeah. Because I know what's possible in the current manufacturing climate. Right. Like you can have whatever you want if mm-hmm. you're willing to pay enough to get somebody to do it, right? Yeah. Um, so that that's smart, but you still do. You have to have a savings in presentation. You have to present the company differently. Right. Right. Um, when it was the 1990 version, the simplicity was a, was a huge selling point, I have to believe, or else they would have done it differently. Yeah? Yeah, it was. I mean, it, but back in then, you didn't have the individuals like you have now. Well, yeah, you didn't sell retail no, at all. N- very, very little. Mm-hmm. They, they had a showroom down in Lawrenceville. Back it's, before it was super expensive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's now a brewery. Yeah, it's of now like all manufacturing centers in Lawrenceville. <laughs> of course it is. I'm sure the brick is exposed too. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, we didn't really sell individually. It right. was all dealers. But it's, yeah, so, it, it, that simplifies their supply exactly, chain. Exactly, and that simplified it for them ordering from us. Do you so. want A or do you want B? That was yeah. it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and having that model switch from a mostly dealer network to a direct-to-consumer product it's it allows us to to control our customer service process a lot more right? right we have an obsessive customer service when you come on and you place your order you place the order but you don't give us your credit card online we actually call you within about 24 hours make sure you're getting exactly what you want we have one inside sales manager sarah she makes contact with every single one of our customers makes them feel comfortable make sure they know they're taken care of and that we're going to fix anything that goes wrong okay so that's really become our niche is this obsessive customer service where we will take care of you like family. Wendy, when, when the new ways of presenting the products came out, right? Let's say when, when Patrick, let's, let's pick on Patrick cause he's here. Please he, do. No, actually cause he can defend himself. As well. <laughs> I don't like, I don't like doing it when the person isn't here to actually defend themselves or whatever. Right. So what was it you were most I'll say skeptical about like what were you like, we've never done it that way before and I'm afraid it's going to fail. Probably interchanging everything. Like when it, the way our lamps were was it had the, like our lamps have a, a rain cap and a finial on top. Okay. So depending on what model lamp you got, that's the rain cap. That's the finial you got. They were all specific. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Wow. They changed all that. You can have whatever rain cap and finial you wanted. And after doing that for 25 years, <laughs> seeing these lamps, this lamp having that lamp's finial on, it's just, that just doesn't look right. It feels weird to you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's a classic. And I can still remember Dave, Patrick's dad, mm-hmm. yeah. he called me up one day and he ordered this lamp and he ordered it with this other finial on it. And I said, Dave, that finial doesn't go on that lamp. And he says... He said to me, he says, there is no such thing as can't work. (laughs) In this case, that's true. And We're not building an atom smasher. Yeah, and it did. I mean, I, looking at it myself, just because of the way it was, I didn't see how that was going to work. This is is an absolute classic. And now, it's like, it's second nature. Yeah. You you ask the customer, that's the first thing you ask the customer. What cap do you want? What finial do you want? But that, I mean... You get that whole sort of like there's the right way, there's the wrong way, and there's the way this company does it, and the third one is always the one you pick, right? <laughs> and and especially if like you you were grinding and you were you know like you were in the early go, right? You, this gets drilled into you, and it's one of the reasons why you lasted as long as you did was because you were like with the program, right? Um, I have to believe that helped sales, the fact that it's the customer feels control. Oh, Back yeah. to Patrick's would, point about I like would, they're skeptical already and they're kind of looking for an out. Yeah, oh, yeah, I would think definitely because I mean they can they can interchange everything now. I mean every the, what we have now is so different than what we had previously. I mean yeah. there are so many options and so many accessories and like you said before, you had your choice. Right. Do you want black or do you want black? Do you want the four sided <laughs> black or the six sided black? Yeah, that's- <laughs> People move on very quickly. 
right? Mm-hmm. When you have everything at your fingertips, the if you hear no more than two times, mm-hmm. you're going to check out. That's right. That is absolutely right. You're gone. If, if you're making this hard, because mm-hmm. again, I showed up pre-stressed, right. pre-tired, because I was afraid of what the process might hold. Right. Are you going to try to you know gig me for like a square trade warranty at the end? Are you going to ask me about financing? Are you going to make me go through a weird process that's right. just like going to burn my whole night? You're... It's a lot easier to get me to abandon my cart than it ever was. That's why it becomes an emotional sale. Are you making me feel better or worse about what I'm doing here? Right. And the more we say no, the worse we're making them feel about their decision. We're, we're putting up walls. Uh, so our job has become lower the walls, make it feel easy. You know what's interesting about that too is that people forget on the product side and on the sales and marketing side that doing nothing is actually a legitimate option available to the buyer. Like your competition is usually inertia, doing yeah. nothing, yep. right? And it's weird. I, I see these pitches where people are trying to get investment or whatever, and they go up and they're like, our competition is X and Y and Z. And I, it bothers me that they never include doing nothing. It's been like this, right? right. Like if you're going to change the lamps on the front of your house, Doing nothing is your biggest competition. We are not reinventing the wheel. I mean, we're not doing anything crazy over there. What we're doing is just listening to the customer, seeing what they want, and trying to make them the focal point. The numbers are a byproduct of customer satisfaction. Yes. The the numbers aren't our sole focus. If we take care of the people, we take care of the customers. You know, I, I hear a lot that people are, you know, 10 times or however many times more likely to tell a negative story than a positive story. I've heard this too, right? What if we give them a positive experience so profound that they can't not go tell people? It's why we see cluster selling. If if we sell Mm -hmm. one lamp within about four to six months, we see a couple others pop up within about a mile range. It's because we give them a good story to tell. Well, it'd be really easy for somebody if they had a bad experience to say, yeah, I love the lamp, but I wouldn't go through it if I were you, Mm -hmm. right? It'd be a very easy thing for people to say to, to their neighbors. Yeah. And do and like I said, it's not a, a hard process. We're just we're a small manufacturing company putting a little extra effort into just listening and making an effort. Like we're not like I said, it's not reinventing the wheel. I think we're just trying to be a little bit better. Now, when you came on, mm-hmm. right, there had to be some assumptions you were making that turned out not to be accurate, right? Right. Because what inevitably what happens is when somebody joins something that they have not been a part of, right? Um, they were like, well, everywhere else I've been. X is true, right? right? And then folks that have been there go, eh, with all respect, <laughs> you know, like they're trying not to be combative about it, but yeah. there's a culture and there's a necessity and it's hard to parse which one's which. Like how much of this can I throw away because it's just the way it's always been done? Right. And how much of it do I really need to go and hit the books on because I just don't understand the necessity? Right. Well, I think there's certain combinations of what you can do with our products that just don't work. Yeah. So I was going out and making some pretty I, wild wait, promises. Hang on. I heard a minute ago there's nothing that doesn't work. <laughs> in, with all respect to, to Mr. Giardini Sr. Yeah. With a small caveat. Oh, sm- yeah. okay. So you know, I was going out and making some some pretty hefty promises that uh, we may or may not have been able to fill. But what I was trying to do was find the edges of, of what's doable. Yeah. Right. If I come back with an outrageous request and mm-hmm. we try to make it happen, if we get 90% of the way there, we know our limit, right? right? So a lot of our effort up front was spent on building these utility partnerships. I was going around to meet all of our vendors or all of our dealers. And, you know, it was them grading me and a little bit of us grading them to see if the, if the relationship was worth it over the long haul, because some of them just aren't, it doesn't make sense for them to push a product. That's a little bit more customized. If they're not making the good margin that they need off of it and just having honest conversations with them. So I think I I may have overstepped my bounds a little bit with what we were capable of supplying on a scale level, uh, on an individual level, and just sort of finding our boundaries. Yeah, easy easy to do. Another mm-hmm. classic, yep. right? I mean, it, that's one of the reasons I wanted to have you guys in here is the fact that, again, it's really easy to read an article and be like, well, you know, companies need to reinvent themselves in the internet age. Like, we've all read that article 500 times, yeah, right? right. <laughs> like, buyers are now harder to please than ever before. You know, right. also, water is still wet. Um, <laughs> Newsflash. Yeah, nothing. none of this is shocking, right? What's interesting is having you guys here talking about what is a real business that has been around for literal decades, yeah. right? And change is hard. Right. Change is always hard. Since 1963, the company has transitioned from utility companies buying lamps for entire communities, the community saying, this is your lamp. They didn't yes. get a choice unless they wanted to buy 
another lamp <laughs> to them coming four sides or six sides exactly. i hear is the, the thing so the, the choice was being made for them and now they're making the choice right. so how do we manipulate or not manipulate but how do we transform the company to handle those types of requests and, and that's it we have to draw them into us it's a very niche business not everybody has a gas lamp but right. when they travel to new orleans or if they travel to charleston maybe they look oh, us up new orleans is a really good example isn't mm-hmm. it yeah. maybe they want to see what's going on with that so then they, they take a look at us and we don't need to sell a lot of product. We just need to target the right people to sell enough product. We're not trying to be a giant company. We want to be small, nimble, and able to take care of customers the way that we do now forever. Well, I've worked for a bunch of places where change took place and people didn't necessarily respect the history or respect the forces that were working against the company, right? Because that seems to be the two sides of the seesaw, right? Yeah. There's people who are like, you don't understand. The internet is coming and those people are rude. <laughs> and then there's the other side where it's like, no, you don't understand. We've been doing this business since, yeah. you know, 1908. And, you know, we've invented this business. Right. You're going too fast and you don't understand it yet, yeah. right? And what's weird, and I've been saying this a lot more recently than I used to say it, is these work marriages are hard because a real marriage is saved by love. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like you can have an argument with your spouse and then go, oh, but you're beautiful, right? <laughs> and I remember that day on vacation on the beach and I don't want to fight with you. <laughs> That's not how work marriages work. No. That's not how that is. People get their feelings hurt and you're attacking their religion. Yep. Right? It's very much like, why are you calling the way I did my first 10 years in the business into question. Yeah. Why are you taking a shot at the the boss who came up with this process, who I love, right? It's very personal. Mm-hmm. I think, well, it, what, what I've tried to be very cognizant of since I came on board full-time is that I am the rookie. I don't act like I have authority over anything. And I try to ask as many questions as humanly possible. Yeah. And I rely on Wendy's feedback. And I, I hope... You know, we could do a 360 review right here on, on live. We're not but doing I, that. I hope that I've done a, a good job. And I, I think. Because frankly, our, you did not fill out all those reports the way you were supposed to fill those out. I think, you know, uncomfortable honesty is the key to that. You have to be just openly communicating all the time. I, I feel like among any industry threat, among any market threat, miscommunication is the silent killer that you may never realize. Can I change that a little bit? Yeah. You have to be cognizant of the, of the power dynamics. Yeah. Right. I mean, let's call it what it is. Yep. Right. If, if you sat on that couch right now, Wendy, and said, well, the Jar- Giardini family is lovely if stupid, right? That would be bad for you. Right. <laughs> no, no, no. And, and we're going to do this. Right. <laughs> because they're obviously not. Right. Like you can see that what they're doing is respectful of the business and building the business. Right. But one of the things about servant leadership and those kinds of things is you have to be cognizant of the power dynamics. Right you have to be strong enough to be vulnerable. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the criticism can come towards you because you're in a position to accept it. Yeah. And you have to have, well, go ahead. Well, the only thing I like to say is, you know, both Patrick and Dave, like when Nate, when Dave first took over, I by no means think I know everything. Nobody knows everything. I have been around. I've seen things happen. I know what can happen, what does happen. And I noticed that both of them, they respect my opinion. They ask my questions. Oh, the fact that you're here proves it. Yes. And and I feel good that they they feel that way towards me, you know, that they, they come to me and ask me questions. But also, I mean, there is things that, and I'm very honest with them. Like if, if they come up to me and they say something that they want to do or, you know, they have an idea or whatever, I'm very honest with them if I don't think it'll work or whatever. Like Dave and I... We we used to battle about spending money. He always wanted to spend money. I always said, you know, I always, oh no, you're no, the brakes. Don't spend it. <laughs> you're ops. You're the brakes. Right. right. They're the gas pedal. You're the brakes. This is how you drive. I'm sorry. It's it's but a yeah, tale I mean, as we, old as time. Exactly. And we don't always see eye to eye. You know, we right. everybody has different opinions. Yeah. But I mean, all in all, I think I think we all get along okay. I mean, we, we've yeah we have an end common goal and it's i mean i think it sounds a little bit grand for what we're trying to do but a round table not approach at all. these are people's lives it's it's a round table approach we don't there's no 
I mean, there, there's a hierarchy for just understanding what the company is, but yeah. really it's, it's a family. It really, like all of our businesses are family businesses. Multiple family members have been involved yeah. and the ones that aren't family members, we try to make them feel that way because I feel, again, that leads to these honest conversations where things that could be detrimental to the company come out where they may stay away hidden. But we've all seen the family that can't take criticism that takes <sighs> over a yeah. business. Yeah. Okay. And that was the point I was trying to make, right? Mm -hmm. The thing about leadership, in my view, is yeah. you can never stop thinking about power. Right. Ever. You can never, and you always have to be the one who takes the most criticism. Or at least you have to be willing to, right? Because you have to invite it if the, if the company's going to change, right. right? And you're going through a lot of change right now in how you sell your product. Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful. I've seen the work. Take the compliment. It's amazing, Thank right? You. But the operations people have to be the brakes. That's yeah. their job. They're like, wait a minute, you're going to crash this whole thing. <laughs> and when you said, like, I don't want to make it seem too grand, I couldn't disagree more, yeah. right? I think, I think you mean well when you say that. When you're trying to downplay, like, the impact of your management or your ideas or whatever. Yeah. But, but I know enough about where you're coming from just from the thoughtfulness you've shown, right, that – you are very respectful of the 28 years that Wendy's put in and you're trying to keep that going as long as you can keep her. Absolutely. By the way, you're never allowed to leave. Absolutely. I just want you to know. <laughs> Forever you're, and ever. Yeah, amen. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if, if I thought we were going to have like a weird Jerry Springer, Dr. Phil thing, you guys wouldn't be here, right? Yeah. Um, talking to Patrick and seeing, again, the transformation that you've been transparent enough to share, mm -hmm. I see very common things that I've seen in the past, right? You know, yeah. like a, a, a storied older company that needed to adjust to the new reality of maybe overindulged, overspoiled consumers, which you don't get to complain about. You just have to adapt. Yeah. People aren't going to want things that are less customized. Right. That's exactly what I mean. <laughs> they want yeah. things that are built just for them. So I think we've sort of found the limit in a nice sweet spot with the options we, we offer our customers now. Now moving forward, like what else do we want to do? If we're a lamp company moving forward, we're kind of a one trick pony. And, you know, we always try to envision the worst case scenario, right? Government tomorrow drops a law that says, boom, all gas lamps are <laughs> right. kaput. So then what does the we company hate do? Patrick and David. <laughs> <laughs> so exactly. Like these guys are nuts. So what do we do after that? So I think we're trying to develop a couple other products that sort of fit into our space. Got some, you know, fire pits. There's a couple, you know, local artisans we'd like to maybe partner up with and feature oh, their this products. Is cool. And I, I love the idea of promote, like our brand is built around handcrafted, you know, customized. Exactly. And I think that there's a lot of that going on in the city where maybe they're not the best at promoting themselves, but they're doing great, honest work. Yeah. So why can't we partner up? Why can't we utilize our megaphone that we're building to promote a lot of good that's going on in the city? Absolutely, man. So I think going forward in the future, we got to figure out ways to get a little bit wide with our own product line, but really figure out how to help the community. And I like the idea, and I've said this to you previously when we were just at a you know like at, at an event or maybe on the phone or something. Mm -hmm. You don't sell anything but art. Mm -hmm. And I think the sooner you adopt that, the better, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, even in your description, Wendy, about the, the four sided and the six sided, and, the, <laughs> and what goes with what. That's an that you're talking about art. You're talking about yeah. Like, what is the aesthetic here, right? Mm -hmm. And and I, if I have one thing that I'm going to say, which is likely not to be 100 percent accurate, because that's just how we do things around here. <laughs> it's I would get out of the fixtures business and I would get into the art business. Yeah. I think that's where you already are. I think, you know, it's fashion, it's art, it's, you know, working with those artisans, figuring out how you can get other artistic viewpoints for special editions and things like that could be super cool. Yeah. Well, we have the, you know, we suffer from a bit of a lack of brand recognition, but we have very good customer loyalty through that, you know, profound customer service. We have people coming back to us like, what else can I buy? And we just nice. don't have anything right now. <laughs> that's such that's a great a problem. problem to have, though. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's a high class it's problem. It's a champagne <laughs> problem, right? For real. So, like, what can we wield with that goodwill? Uh, what can we produce from it? So, and that's what we're in the process of figuring out. And I think, yeah, it's going to, it's a passion product. It, it's an artful product. It's a beautiful product. It's going to help. It, it's not essential to your life, but it's going to help enhance it. We started with the lamps. What else can we involve that does the same, has the same effect? That's cool. I appreciate you both coming in here. I, I really, I, I, this was a very valuable conversation for me personally. Thank and I hope for, for everybody that's listening back at home. 
We're really appreciative. Yes, thank you for having us. All right, that's all the time we've got. Thanks to Wendy and Patrick and everybody over at American Gas Lamp. That was that was a really cool show. I, I love having the full story with transparency and heart. That was a that was a really good conversation. Hopefully, you'll check them out at AmericanGasLampWorks.com. Uh, hey, holidays are coming up. You know, maybe uh, maybe gas lamps are in your future. I don't know. I, I want to make sure they get paid back for for you know as much transparency as we had. Uh, subscribe to the show if you haven't already. Click the button. You'll get it every Wednesday morning. We'll catch you next week. Take care of yourself in the meantime. The Pitchworks Podcast comes to you from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. A production of the Epicast Network and McTaggart, LLC. Engineering and production by Buzzy Torek and Nick Miller. For more information, show feedback, and ad sales, visit pitchworks.com. P-I-T-C-H-W-E-R-K-S.com. On social media, find and follow the show on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram using that same brand name, P-I-T-C-H-W-E-R-K-S.